So the plan here in Zion National Park today was to get up really early, go shoot sunrise, explore, and then about an hour and a half before sunrise, I woke up to, well, I woke up to terrible weather. Pouring, pouring rain here in Zion. It's clearing up a bit now, but it's still pretty miserable. So I think the plan this morning is to uh, drive through the park and head towards Page. I just saw on Twitter that Ben Horn was in sleeping in his truck last night in Death Valley because of flash flood warnings. So um, it's pretty bad all around. Hopefully it's better in Page. The craziest part is the weather forecast two days ago said it was supposed to be fine. I guess let's get to Page and wish for the best because Page is awesome. Antelope Canyon, Horseshoe Bend, star photography, basically anything goes there. Let's hit the road. Bye! <laughs> Made it to, whoa! Town's not called whoa, my mic just went crazy. Made it to Page, and the light was way better here when we got here about an hour ago, but it looks like it's getting worse again. And I just looked online at a weather map and it looks like that weather from Zion is coming this direction. But I'm dead set on going and exploring and getting a couple shots today. We're going to Horseshoe Bend tomorrow. We're going to Antelope Canyon tomorrow. So I think I wanna try something I've never done here. I wanna check out Lake Powell. So it's about 3.30 in the afternoon, which gives me about an hour to location scout. Now, normally when I come places, when I go to places for my first time, I'll look online, try to find some images. I'll do a little bit of research to try to get some ideas of what I wanna shoot, but I have no idea at all here. And to be honest, I think that's kind of fun. It kind of lets you put your own twist on things. I think it's really important to do your research before, but I think it's equally important to location scout yourself and try to come up with something unique or something that's your own. So that's what I'm doing over the next hour. So I guess let's get back on the road and location scout a couple other spots. So a bit of a location scouting tip, and I think this video is mostly going to be talking about location scouting, is that you really, really, really have to try to focus on seeing the world as your camera sees it and seeing the world through your different lenses. It's really easy to come to a big, wide open place like this, see it and think, wow, that would make an amazing photo. But the reality is, through the lens, it's going to look way different. If, especially if you put on a wide angle lens, it's going to make this all look really flat. But your camera sees a different focal length than your eyes do. And your camera sees a different dynamic range than your eyes do. So becoming a pro and becoming really good at location scouting and really good at photography is starting to see the world the way your camera does rather than the way your eyes do. So that's what I'm doing right now. This is a really, really beautiful viewpoint, but I think I need something with a little bit more I don't know, a little bit more depth and maybe an anchor to shoot as well. So let's carry on. So just as I pulled up to this parking space, the sun punched through this cloud behind me and is lighting everything up in front of me. The light is absolutely phenomenal, even though it's still quite a ways until sunset. Now, another location scouting tip I can give you guys is to never stop location scouting. No matter where I am in the world, even if I'm not shooting, even if I'm just taking a bus, or no matter what, I'm always seeing things as potential photo stops. And when I see things, I'll add them to my map on Google. I'll add a label that says like potential photo spot, and then I can location scout them later or when I have free time or when I'm back in that region. On my Google saved maps, I have like hundreds and hundreds of locations around 
around the world saved. So when I come back to a place, I can go back to them and shoot them. Now this place is called Lone Rock, and I actually spotted this as we were driving from Zion to Page, and I thought that looks like a pretty cool location. I'll check that out, and as it turns out, it's unreal. And not only just because of the Lone Rock, but in all directions, there's beautiful things to be shot. There's nice canyon walls, there's nice contrast, and the way the light is right now, it's just gonna be perfect. This is beautiful. This location is just stunning. And I've got a composition I really like. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on, but what I do wanna talk about is another location scouting tip, and that's go out really early. I left over two hours before sunset. It's now still an hour and a bit until sunset, but by leaving early, I give myself a chance to not only scout locations, but that off chance that the light's gonna be best actually way before sunset. The light right now is perfect. I don't think the light's gonna get better at sunset, and if I would've left an hour before sunset, I might have missed this. So give yourself a lot of time to location scout, even if you think that you don't need it. Worst case scenario, you sit on location, you wait for the light, you play a bit of Candy Crush, and life is good. I got one last landscape photography location scouting tip for you and then I'll get into these images and talk about these shots a little bit. This last one is, just because you picked your location doesn't mean the location scouting is over. You've got your location, you're an hour early, you don't just sit there and watch YouTube videos. Don't do that, explore, constantly look around, picking out different shots. What I tend to do is I'll get to the location and I'll do this. I'll find a really, really cool wide angle image. I think the wide angle image is the easiest to find and it tends to be that hero image. And once I've figured that out, I'll take one shot, just to make sure I got something. Then I'll switch on a long lens, like my 70 to 200. And I'll just walk around picking out different details in the landscape. And as I do, I click off images in case the light doesn't pop off. But the main goal is that the light pops off. And when it does, you can run over, knock out your wide angle image, switch lenses really quick, and you've already got the compositions figured out and sorted out for your long lens shots. And you can be the absolute most effective possible. So that's the last tip. Now let's get shooting. On the wide angle right now, the sky looks absolutely crazy. And I've just been shooting off some five second exposures with a six stop ND and a three stop soft grad, and it looks good. But I want some movement. I want to take this to the next level. So I'm going to put on the 10 stop filter and try for a two minute exposure. So let's drop the 10 stop in. And now my meter says that it's going to be 30 seconds at f5.6. So that means if I spin the dial to f8, it'll be one minute. If I spin the dial to f11, it'll be two minutes, and I think that'll be perfect. So let's knock this off and see what it looks like. It just got quite a bit darker as I was setting up that shot, so I switched my exposure to three minutes from two minutes. So we got three minute exposure, f11, and it's gonna be done in about two seconds here. Here we go. Ooh. It's a little bit underexposed still, even with that half a stop extra minute added, but it looks really, really cool. I think with an edit, that'll really clean up. I'm pretty happy with that image. I think now I'm gonna head back to my original composition.
What a perfect shoot. This has just been awesome. The light was unbelievable. It wasn't that punchy, like sunsetty light you sometimes get, but it's perfect. In fact, it's still perfect. In fact, the biggest problem I had with today's shoot is that there's almost too much color and it looks really, really fake. Looking at the back of my camera right now, it just looks like there's way too much dynamic range. It almost looks HDR, which is crazy. In fact, right now I'm going to share with you guys the image I just took straight out of the camera. To kind of give you guys an example of what it looked like straight out of the camera. Way, way too punchy. Um, the light's dead now, I think. It's still kind of a little bit nuclear that way. It's, um, yeah, I think it's done though. And it's just been absolutely, absolutely perfect. <sighs> There's nothing better than getting out to a location like this and having it all to yourself. It's just been so good. Um, tomorrow, we're still here in Page. I think earlier I said that we were going to Antelope Canyon. We're not. We're going to Canyon X, which is like an alternate to Lower Antelope Canyon. And that should be fun. I think if there's clear skies tomorrow, I'm going to try some star photography at Horseshoe Bend as well. But I guess we'll see what happens. I'll see you guys there. Peace.